everything's out of its mold and it's pulling out of its I mean, this is cancer. I guess this could be lymphogenic spread. My name is Dr. Dale Cordudu. I am the founder of Black Men and White Coats, and I'm a pulmonary and critical care physician practicing at the Dallas VA Medical Center. I absolutely love what I do. There are very few jobs in the world where I think you kind of get most of what you want in one package. I was raised in League City, Texas, which is just outside of Houston. Academics were very important to my parents. I always tell the story about one time when I came home and I said, hey dad, check out this test score. I got a 98%. And my dad looked at it. He said, what happened to the other two points? Even though he knew I gave him my all and he was happy with the 98%, he was making a point that son, if you can do better, do better. Honestly, I don't remember pretty much anything in high school except for playing basketball. And when I got to college and realized that basketball wasn't the path that my life would take me, my focus shifted to academics. I was a biology major at the University of Missouri. I went to the University of Missouri for med school as well. Did my residency at Duke University Medical Center in Durham, North Carolina, and fell in love with the program at UT Southwestern where I did my pulmonary critical care fellowship. There are numbers as low as, you know, 2% of all physicians are African-American males in medicine. If you don't have very many black males in medicine for you to see, for you to emulate, for you to get mentorship from, it becomes difficult. In 2013, the AAMC came out with a report highlighting the decrease in number of black men applying to medical school, and we thought there's got to be some way we can contribute to this. We set my cell phone up and we actually filmed the very first black men in white coats. It had a great welcoming online, you know, tens of thousands of views. And then we've since filmed multiple episodes of Black Men in White Coats. There's this belief that, as a black male, that you can't go talk to a physician, and often that you can't go up and talk to a black male physician, but Black Men in White Coats is helping to shatter that belief. So now they come to us and say, hey, can you come talk to us? Can you come talk to my children? Can you come talk to my school? To let them know you can become a physician if that's what you really want to do in life. Did that mean she hit her leg? That's one separate thing, and then she's got these, she still has a different condition here. I used to go in the ICU and I would see patients like this, and I would freak out, because that's intimidating. When you walk in the ICU, people have all these lines and tubes in them. The most rewarding part of my job is knowing that everything that I've learned, I have the ability to pass back to teach other people so they can go on and teach other people. I really enjoy writing. I've actually written two books, one on mentoring for pre-medical students, and the other one is kind of a guide for parents to show them how to raise a doctor. I have three children, two boys, and a daughter. And my wife has been my, my rock. One of the best things that's ever happened to me because of her, I'm able to do things like diverse medicine, pre-med star, black men and white coats. She can provide input in ways nobody else can. <laughs> Having two daughters in the house is perfect for us. It works really well because we can understand what each other are going through. In deciding how we're gonna raise our children, my wife and I were very, very thoughtful in determining who do we want our children to see as their role models, what do we want to expose our children to. There are certain things in culture which can make the African-American man look bad. Certain ways we're portrayed in maybe music videos or in movies. The reality of the situation is less than 5% of black males are in prison, media, entertainments. The vast majority of us are out and about doing other things, but the key is, the media does not raise your children. Culture does not raise your children. Parents raise children. One time when I was in college, I was flying home from St. Louis back to Houston. I just got on the plane wearing my typical clothing and the woman sitting next to me just started berating me. She told me that I didn't speak well. She told me that I dressed funny. She said I, that I would just never amount to anything in life. I remember just thinking to myself, is this what people think when they see me? Is this what people think when they see people who look like me that we're never gonna be successful? Don't let other people set your expectations, set your own expectations and set them high. I think one of the big issues that we face as a minority community is so many people feel as though they need permission to go out there and be great. You don't need permission to be great, you already have permission to be great. People are scared to know what will happen if they give it their all. If you can take that focus off yourself and know that what you're doing is help other people, man, every day when you wake up you should want to give it your all to know that you can help somebody else's life be better. If you don't have a why, then one day you're gonna wake up and say, wow, medicine's too hard, I'm gonna quit. But if you know, I'm doing this because nobody thought I can do this, I'm doing this because that woman on the airplane told me I was gonna be a failure. I'm doing this because I've got a wife, I've got kids, I've gotta feed them. I'm doing this because there's a whole group of younger individuals who are looking at me to be successful. When times get hard, remember that that pressure is what produces diamonds. My identity, who I am, has absolutely nothing to do with this white coat. This white coat is a job, but this white coat is not my work. My work in life, is to be the best servant I can to other people to help make them the best they can be. You should never be afraid to ask for help. You should never be afraid to step out of your comfort zone to ask somebody how they became what they are. If you see somebody who's doing something that you might be interested in, go ask them. Nobody is self-made. 
everybody has somebody who helps them. And if you want to be successful, find that person who's going to help you. My name is Dr. Dale Okorodudu, and I am a black man in a white coat. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting Black Men in White Coats. We're doing everything we can to have a positive impact on the community. I do have one favor to ask. If you're enjoying Black Men in White Coats and if you believe in our mission, please share the video. Share it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn, email. However you can share it. Send it to Oprah, Obama, Steve Harvey, Ellen, Trump, anybody. Just get the video out so we can get more Black men in the field of medicine. And if you're a physician or just anybody who wants to mentor and help change lives, please visit us at blackmenandwhitecoats.org and register to be a mentor. If you're a student looking for a mentor, do the same thing. Visit us at blackmenandwhitecoats.org and we'll do everything we can to help you get on the right track to becoming a black man in a white coat. Thank you.